I, I give them a small lesson on Lebanese Society 101 and how it works and how it's very bad to tell little girls that a big nose is bad, encouraging them to do this. For 10 years, I've been struggling to make films. I've tried to make stuff I believe in, but I'm always let down. Instead, I've decided to document my life and struggle to create. If Egyptians or other or Tunisians start thinking that, oh, the new standard now is perfect, then they're setting themselves to fail. You know, it's going to be a continuous fight for a long time. It's our responsibilities. The revolutionaries who made this revolution possible can't walk away from it now. That would be irresponsible. It would lead to people and, and or, you know, anti-democratic forces um, coming into power and, and, and jumping and hijacking on, on the revolution. Often when people think about the Arab region, they tend to think that there is no freedom of expression. But the country is varied drastically, especially Lebanon, where you have a bit more freedom. I started my blog mostly because I was bored at work. I didn't have anything to do. And I love drawing and I love illustration. And my job didn't allow me to really draw a lot, as much as I like to. So in my free time, I started drawing those stories. And after a while, I decided to share them online and have them archived in a way. So this is how the blog started. And um, this is why I chose drawing, because I love it. And I feel more comfortable expressing myself in illustration than in text. So the issues I talk about most on the blog and the ones that uh, mostly affect me as a person living in Lebanon, as a woman living in Lebanon, are mostly um, socio-political issues like women's rights and uh, basic uh, daily human rights and basic infrastructure like electricity and proper traffic, proper roads and of course corruption. I was going to work and I saw a huge billboard for Mother's Day by a major flower shop in Lebanon and it said thank you mom for the good and the bad and it showed a mother and, a, and her, her daughter with huge ears and then another one with huge noses so I, I gave them a small lesson on Lebanese Society 101 and how it works and how it's very bad to tell little girls that a big nose is bad encouraging them to do this which is undergo a very terrible operation and cut a part of them. I mean, it's like cutting your finger out or something when you remove part of your nose. I think this ad was really a disaster on the social and moral level. The interesting part is that a few weeks later, after the, all the action that happened online, they actually changed the ad. They replaced the big nose and the big ears with curly hair and freckles on the face, which are not offensive at all, which are, no, which are accepted that they are beautiful from everyone. A lot of people, whenever I said I'm a blogger and who didn't know like Lebanon is, has a bit more freedom, they're like, wow, as if I'm, you know, I'm so courageous. And, but as Lebanese, blogging does not mean risk of getting, getting tortured or put in jail. So I'm very happy that finally they'll be able to break the stereotype of Arab countries as, uh, as uh, torture for, for people who say their opinions, as a country who doesn't have rights for women or for even for men. You know, for, to say their, their, own, uh, their own thoughts and opinions and to be able to make a change if they want to. Probably in 1789 when the French Revolution happened, they didn't have internet, so that's why they didn't use it. If they, if they had it back then, they would have used it. It's just a means of communication and I don't think it makes or breaks a uh, revolution. Like when you are a large number, you can make a change, so it helps uh, put people together and in a very fast way like in the internet one year is so is so like in a human age it's like 10 years